With using books and ebooks, you don't just read about it, you see it and hear it with step-by-step -step video tutorials and valuable audio sidebars delivered through the free web edition that comes with every using book and ebook. Tell Me More Audio delivers practical insights straight from the experts. Here's an example. Greetings, my name is J. Peter Berzizi and welcome to Tell Me More About Windows 7. In this discussion, let's talk about the security features that Windows 7 has to offer. Joining me today is Brian Posey. Brian is an internationally published technical author and holds the unique distinction in the past of being one of the Department of Information Management for Fort Knox. Yes, folks, that's where all the gold is reportedly held. Nice of you to join us, Brian. Thanks, Peter. Brian, first off, is there really gold at Fort Knox? Oh, uh, that's classified. Classified? As they say in the movies, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Okay, all right. So uh, so with my life intact, let's move on then. Um, now, Windows 7 makes some security adjustments, and uh, you're just the guy to talk to about these. The user account control. Now, this is something that many felt in Windows Vista was just a nightmare feature. And uh, now it's been given a slider, which sort of helps to mitigate that a little bit. What are your thoughts on that? You know, it's crazy. I, I can't remember ever seeing another Windows feature that had so many different opinions as a user account control. I've talked to some people who never, ever seem to have gotten a, a user account control prompt and don't even know what it is, and some people just think it's the most annoying feature that Microsoft ever created. Um, my personal opinion, I, I like it because if I get a pop-up and I know I didn't do anything to initiate that pop-up, something's wrong. Um, one of the things a lot of people fail to think about, though, is that even in Vista, it was possible to disable user account control. And you can still do that in uh, Windows 7, too, but you have the option of using this new slide bar so that you can tone it down a little bit without completely disabling it. I tend to think it's a nice feature, but I think it was more done to keep people happy and shut some people up than to actually offer a lot of real benefit. Uh, and one of the reasons why I say that is because it's in there, but you kind of have to look for it. It's not something that's just in your face at the time that you install the operating system. Hey, how do you want to set this feature up? So that's just my two cents for whatever it's worth. Well, that's great input. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, BitLocker to go. I know we could talk about a lot of different features, but uh, I'm just curious about this one. Uh, do you feel that it's a solid new feature or just a, a mini add-on with Windows 7? Well, BitLocker has been around for a while, and from what I've read about it, it kind of feels a bit like an add-on, but in all fairness, this isn't a feature that I've spent a great deal of time um, experimenting with yet. So I don't really feel like I can render an intelligent opinion at this point. Well, that's great. You know, I know personally for myself, I've spent a little bit of time with BitLocker to go. Um, I was just curious about this. So I, I plugged in a USB uh, device, and it encrypted it without a problem. I felt it took a little long to encrypt my USB keychain, but I felt that uh, that it does a good job. The nice thing about it, though, from what I understand, is that it's more than just a USB protector, but it protects any type of removable drive. Uh, and it works independently of the OS's BitLocker, so you don't have to really know much about BitLocker itself, but you can just plug in your keychain devices and set it to encrypt. So that's kind of nice. The other thing that I like about it is that there are policies that you can actually push out when it comes to your BitLocker to go. Administrators can actually configure a policy to force all removable drives to be read-only unless they're first encrypted with BitLocker to go. So then at that point the drives become writable if they're encrypted. So there's a couple of great things that you can do with BitLocker to go and group policy itself. But let's move on. Let's talk about another feature that I know you spent some time with, AppLocker. How do you feel about the new AppLocker features? I think it's a big improvement over what we previously had with software restriction policies. It's still not quite as good as some of the third-party software like, say, Bit9's Parity, uh, but it's definitely an improvement. The one thing that I don't really care for about AppLocker is that you have to be really careful when you set it up. Once you um, begin defining any kind of um, restrictions on the software that can run, basically you tell Windows what is allowed to run, and anything that you don't explicitly define is no longer allowed to run. So it's actually possible to completely lock yourself out of Windows if you don't set it up right. Well, that is good to know. All right, so there you have it, folks. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, no problem. We hope you found that informative, and thanks for listening.